A very good afternoon to you. Welcome to Core TV News at this hour. I am Omotayo Alo. President Mohamed Buhari has named new service chiefs within a week. A few hours of relieving the previous ones of the appointment. He also appointed retired Major General Papagana Mugunu on the National Security Advisor to replace retired Colonel Sambo Dasuki. Major General Abayoni Uluni Shaki is new Chief of Defense Staff, while another Major General, Tanko Burutai, is the Chief of Army Staff. Royal Admiral Ibok Eta Ibas is new Chief of Naval Staff. Air Vice Marshal Sadiq Abubakar is Chief of Air Staff, and Air Vice Marshal Monday Morgan is now the Chief of Defense Intelligence. This is the first time an Nigerian president is naming a Chief of Defense Intelligence. President Muhammad Buhari Monday in Abuja urged the newly appointed service chiefs to help him rebuild the reputation of the armed forces and the nation. Addressing them shortly after the appointment were announced, the president also called on them to show utmost commitment to their duties. He assured them that their nominations will be sent to the National Assembly as soon as possible for confirmation. Few hours before he was relieved of his appointment, former Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Kenneth Minima had declared that victory at Burgerum insurgent is in sight. He maintained that the recent military offensive against the terrorists had severely affected their combat capacity. General Minima, who was speaking at the Chief of Army Staff conference in Abuja, urged out the recent spate of suicide bombing in some parts of the country as a consequence of the eight the insurgent are facing in this ambassador forest enclave. He also assured Nigerians that troops would soon clear the forest of Boko More Haram. importantly, we would, during this conference, re-examine the state of operation in Lafayette so as to add more impetus to our offensive into the last remaining enclaves and camps of the terrorists. In the past few months, we have achieved tremendous success in reclaiming all previously occupied territories from the terrorists. Today, the ability to face our gallant troops in any form of combat has been seriously degraded. Consequently, the terrorists have cowardly resorted to attacking innocent and vulnerable citizens in markets, places of worship, and similar places of gathering. I therefore urge you to use the opportunity offered by this conference to deliberate on measures to enable the Nigerian Army in synergy with sister services, security organizations and agencies, and paramilitary to adequately respond to these new tactics of the terrorists. Exactly one week after a twin bomb blast killed scores in just the capital city of Plato State, an aircraft charge in Chudan Wada area of Joss was again the target on Sunday morning when several explosive devices were planted within the church premises. The device was said to have been discovered by a guard who picked and threw it across the fence seconds before it went off. Church members who spoke with our correspondent said the church, which often welcomed 1,000 500 members every Sunday was future capacity during the incident. While most Christians in Nigeria went about their religious obligation in church, little did the worshippers at the Evangelical Church winning of Ekwa, Tudunwada, and just the Plato State capital knew it would be a close shave with disaster on the day. For these worshippers, it was a day they will never forget. Uh, when I had the blast in the church this morning, I was confused. I thought it was even a gunshot. I was asking my neighbor in the church. I said, ah, is that a gunshot? He said, ah, mommy, that one is more than gunshot. So that was how it all went. And with the Lord on our side, the service was able to come to an end. We were able to do our worship fully because it was a praise worship service. And we really worship God because he's the one in control. He's the one that covered us with his blood. If not, it would have been something else. Because that congregation is a very large congregation. Uh, our church normally takes up to about 1,500 people. 
uh, though last Sunday it was 1,400 and something as it was announced in church this morning, but, but generally we range between that number and 1,005. Uh, uh, people were a little bit restless after the first sound, uh, but at the end of the day, it, it, it was David Gwanji, an elder in the church, says, but for security arm, the story would have been different. He added that explosions are heard on a daily basis in Jos, and that some even go unreported until casualties are involved. Uh, when, when the explosion occurred, almost everybody was frightened. People were not sure what happened. Most of the people in Cherry were asking, what is it? Is it a, a gunshot or, or a blast or whatever? But uh, uh, those of us who have uh, been listening very well to the kinds of sounds that come out n now and again knew that it was a blast. The, the people at the Hem of Affairs in church camps were able to calm the, the, the people down and uh, there was no stampede. I think that helped a lot. It helps in keeping everybody uh, quiet. It was a praise and worship service, and it, 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 it continued after the first blast. But I learned that there was, there was another, uh, another blast, but it was, it was not as serious as the first one because uh, we were all singing and praising God, and, and then that one happened. But by, by, by that time, the anti-bomb squad had already arrived. Why the state and federal government continue to work at finding solution to the incessant bloodletting in the state, it is a clarion call that needs to be heeded before the frustration of residents boil over. The new commissioner of police of the state, Abdul Majid Ali, has read out riot act to officers and men of the command to brace up and be more committed to duties as he will not tolerate any crime or police unprofessionalism recorded in any part of the state. The commissioner made this known on Monday while addressing officers and men of the command in his Iliwiano office. He reinstated this dedication to the paradigm shift in the Nigerian police and the ongoing reform policies of the Inspector General of Police, Solomon Arazi, as well as his plans to implement same across board in Ogu State to have people-oriented policing. In the press release by Ogun State PPRO, DSP Olumuiwa Adejobi, Ali reiterates the launched platforms by the Inspector General of Police through which members of the public can lodge their complaints or all the experience with the police personnel who engage themselves in unethical or unprofessional conduct. The platforms include CP's hotline 08055 uh, force complaint officers 07056 and PPRO's numbers 083, 08037168147 or 08123822910. He assured the good people of the state of adequate security of lives and property and a respectful and professional police command that can make Nigeria proud globally. We take a break now. We're back with more stories. Stay tuned for more. Some pundits believe that as long as the political system is driven by selected fee, corruption may be difficult to fight. You should be careful about what you say. I am not the only politician. Even if I wrong, if I wrong anyone, Welcome, you're still on to Core TV News on the hour. And for more news and information, do also visit our social media platform, facebook.com forward slash Core TV News. You could also follow us and tweet at us at Core TV News NG. Also, get us streaming live on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash core TV. Take a space and news.
President Mohamed Buhari said Monday in Abuja that his administration will handle the issue of subsidies and petroleum products with care. Speaking after receiving the brief from the Ministry of Petroleum Resources, the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, and all the agencies in the oil sector, President Buhari said that he will carefully review all the submissions he had received and the need to remove the subsidies. President Buhari also said that the lack of security, sabotage, vandalism, corruption and mismanagement, not necessarily subsidies, are the most serious problems of Nigeria's oil sector. He promised to deal decisively with all identified problems of the oil and gas sector. President Buhari directed the NNPC to review existing agreement for the swapping of crude oil for refined products with a view to injecting more honesty and transparency into the process to reduce cost. The president also asked the NNPC management to uh, do more to improve the supply of liquefied petroleum gas. The Federal High Court in Abuja has ordered the release of former head of service Stephen Orosaye from the custody of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. It also directed Defence Counsel Kano Agbabi to make an undertaking that the accused person will not evade justice. Trial Judge Justice Gabriel Kolawali consequently fixed July 21 for hearing on bail application and an October 28 date for Orosaye's trial proper. Basil Okafor has more in this report and presented from our studios. The former head of service was brought to court from one of EFCC holding facilities. Orosaye, who retired from the civil service in 2010, was in the dock on a 24-count charge to which he pleaded not guilty and he will be going home to his family. Justice Kolawole issued the order after listening to an oral bail application by the defense counsel which the prosecution was not comfortable with. The prosecution, Ali Yusuf, argued that the bail application had to be documented and urged the courts to remand Orosaye and the other accused persons remanded in prison pending hearing on their bail application. In a short ruling, Justice Kolawole directed that the former head of service be released from EFCC custody but insisted that the lead defense counsel, Kanu Agabi, must do an undertaking that the accused person will not evade justice. He based his decision to release Orosaye and his co-accused persons on the grounds that they had been on administrative bail. The judge, Kolawole, thereafter fixed July 21 for hearing on the bail application and set a trial date for October 28 and 29. The over 500 million Naira Governor Adam Sushyamale takes home monthly. A security vote when the state is not in crisis has been described as unfortunate and questionable. The state the PDP chairman, Dan Obi, while briefing party faithfuls and journalists at the party secretariat in Benin City concerning financial recklessness, says the governor has no moral right to accuse all this when he is not clean. He called on the governor to return all the money he has collected since his Yemen office in the name of security votes. For the restating, he has no moral right to accuse others. I do state correspondent files in this report and presented from our studios. The party chairman who tendered vouchers of March 2013 to the effect which the security votes were collected at will when the state is not in crisis, describe it as disturbing, adding that he is ready to furnish the EFCC document with all the atrocity of the present administration as long as the anti-graft agency is not selective. He also alleged that the inability of some local governments to pay salaries was attributed to the governor who often slashes their allocation. To respond to the treasury, all, all money collected from the time he assumed office under the heading of security challenges. Because there are no security challenges here. Do you have Boko Haram in Edo State? No. <laughs> Except for a few reported cases of people stealing gold and uh, breaking into gold. <laughs> Meanwhile, the state APC publicity secretary, Godwin Erahan, defended Adam Oshiomole by saying that such money is being used to address social issues and other state challenges. The governor collects as a, a security vote, 
but let me also say that uh, the, it, is, it, is, it is the prerogative of because it is part of the privileges of the governor. And security vote is not meant for police, it's not meant for soldiers alone. It's beyond uh, 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 just uh, violence or whatever or war in the state. It also has to take care of some social responsibilities. For example, in the state where PDP left majority of our youth unemployed, to curb uh, the menace of uh, uh, criminals in the state required some serious logistics, which governor is not obliged to, to, to disclose to the people. Because when you say security, it means security in all areas, both prevention and then uh, 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 control. However, the PDP chairman also lamented that the 30 billion naira funds obtained from the capital market to address erosion challenges through water storm by the governor is yet to be seen. Edo State Governor Adam Sushyamale on Monday said he has welcomed the call by the state chapter of the People's Democratic Party to the Economic Financial Crimes Commission to conduct a probe on the state local government account. The state chairman of the party, Dan Obi, had on Sunday in a press briefing called on the EFCC to investigate the oppression of the LG funds owing to the non-payment of salaries of the council workers. Obi had also challenged the governor to forfeit a security vote to enable the councils fulfill their financial obligation to the aggrieved employers. But the governor, in a statement by a special advisor on media and public affairs, Prince Kazim Afegwa, urged the anti graft agency to begin the probe starting from 1999 when the opposition party controlled the state government. The governor said while the state under his leadership was driven by prudence in the management of resources, he was proud the achievement of his administration in the last six years far superseded that of the PDP's 10 years of governing the state. The governor said that it would be interesting for Nigerians if the PDP could publish all accruals to local government between 1999 and 2008, same way it published inaccurately the figures between 2008 and 2015. The allegation by Governor Adam Sashiamale of Edo State that former Minister of Finance uh, Ngozi Kojo Iwiala spent $1 billion out of the excess crude accounts to fund the re-election bid of former President Jonathan is the kind of ludicrously uh, false statement that has unfortunately become a trademark of the governor in his public campaign of falsehood against Dr. Konjo Iwiala. The statement, according to press release signed by media advisor to the former minister, Paul Wabioko, is just another example of the numerical diarrhea that seems to have afflicted His Excellency in recent times in his effort to damage the reputation of the former minister. The former minister added that the Edo state governor has within the last few months asked R to explain all kinds of totally wild and obstinate substantiated figures ranging from 30 billion dollars 20 billion dollars 2.1 billion dollars uh, 720 billion naira and now uh, 1 billion dollars to say the obvious the accusations are totally lacking in credibility governor shamala's published comment also contain all the fossil first stance he quoted uh, Dr. Okodre Wiala is saying that she and the finance commissioners of the 36 state approved the spending of $2.1 billion out of the excess crude account, adding that the commissioners had discerned the statement. This is also a complete distortion. The Office of the Accountant General of Equity State today Day became a charter protest as the state civil servant protested over the non remittance of the deductions made from the salaries for the month of May. The union thereafter gave the state government a 24 hour ultimatum to pay all further actions from the workforce. Rashid Rashid has more in this report. I 
The Office of the Equity State Accountant General took a new look as work resumed for the week. No thanks to the protest led by leaders of various labor unions and some of their members. Their grouse is the non-remittance of monthly deductions made from their salaries to pay up loans and cooperatives, especially that of the month of May. The workers state their grievance, adding that the problem is not with the state governor, but the Accountant General's office. Divided we beg, but united we demand. What we are demanding for is the immediate release of our May 2015 salary and deductions for 2015. It is our right. It is not a privilege and it is not a benefit. After a series of meetings with the labor leaders, the Accountant General Uluwayemi Uwulabi addressed the protesters with a promise to start disbursement of the deductions saying the money is available, contrary to some erroneous belief that it is not there. As long as the deductions are not paid, then salaries are not paid. Hopefully, by the grace of God, the deductions will be getting a lot by the labor people tomorrow. The labor leaders say they will be holding the state government to the promise, vowing to take further steps if it's not kept. We want to take you for your works. And we believe that as soon as we get the alert, we'll get back to you. We'll get back to you as soon as the alert is received. And if the alert is not received as well, we'll get back to you. With the promise by the Accountant General being held up by the workers, the clock ticks from now as equity workers wait for the expiration of the 24-hour ultimatum or go on industrial action. Rashid Rashid, or TV News, Adwekiti. The only land of Maka and Tuesday observed Lailatu Qadri, the night of majesty. Muslim faithful around the globe look out for this night in the last 10 days of Ramadan. The significance of this month is to ask for forgiveness from the Almighty and cleansing of the soul. A correspondent, Olajide Adediro, was at the Aram, the worship center of Maka. His report. The Holy Land of Maka on Monday evening witnessed massive influx of people from all walks of life who have come to share from the glory of the last third night of Ramadan, Laila to the country, the night of majesty. At the Kaaba, all creatures irrespective of status are reduced to commoners. They all move around the Kaaba in their white Iram attire. <laughs> At about 12 a.m. Tuesday morning, Al Haram, the worship center of Mecca, was already full to the brim. The last third night of Ramadan is when Allah descends to the lowest heaven to reckon the cause of all who believes and genuinely call on him. It is called Laila to the country, the night of majesty. For Laji Diyadi Junior Court TV News, Maka, Saudi Arabia. And on to foreign sin, French police are hunting for three hand men who stormed a pre marked store in an unsuspected robbery attempt north of Paris. The gunmen fled the scene after special forces evacuated 18 people trapped inside the Quad shopping centre in Villeneuve La Grande. None of those released 18 people was injured. The area around the shopping centre has been shut down. The incident began early on Monday and lasted several hours. Another police source said an employee first alerted a boyfriend to the order at around 7, um, 7 o'clock when she sent him a text message saying they had been taken hostage by two armed men. There are reports that one of the men had been recognized as a Primark employee, but there's been no confirmation from the police. And it's a wrap on Core TV News at this hour. Thank you so very much for watching. I remain Omotayo. Alo. Bye for now.